Hello everybody, it is I, the Iron Glutch, and I figured I'd do a special video. I recently finished playing through Borderlands as a pre-sequel with my buddy Marty, and I honestly had a fun time, so I figured now that I'm done with it, I might try something different, so I'm going to review the game. I'm not going to have a script for this video, so I'm just going to go off the top of my head for some things, and a few criteria that I'm going to go over for how I'm going to rate this game is story, gameplay, characters, the characters you play as, villains, and replayability. So let's start with story. I absolutely love this story, honestly. It's really intriguing to see the rise and fall of Handsome Jack. The fact that we get to see him start from this meager little accountant in the company, rising up to controlling the company, being in charge of Helio Station, and eventually he becomes an absolute monster reasonably so because a lot of things happen to him in the game and he kind of just starts off a little kind of psychotic but it only gets worse and worse for him throughout the game and just more and more things are just starting to pile up on top of him until he finally snaps and he fully becomes who he's meant to be in borderlands 2 and that is just so interesting to watch and then you have just all the world building this story adds to the world of Borderlands. Yeah, not always are prequels like good forms of storytelling, but they just do it so well and everything just fits perfectly. I will say though, with the story, there are a bit of issues. The quote unquote villain of the story, Colonel Zarpanon and all of her troops, honestly, pretty damn boring i really can't say much about them because it's not really much to them it's just like oh you're a bad guy i gotta stop you and for borderlands it was very boring characters and borderlands is not often known for having boring characters it's known for being out there and just absolutely wacky but she felt honestly pretty lackluster while we are on that topic let's get into the villains right so colonel zarpadon um it's just boring. I can't really say much about it because there's not much to say. Not enough to her character other than I saw visions, you're a bad guy, I have to stop you. And that's it. I will say her death scene is one of the funniest death scenes in any game that I've seen. It was just executed perfectly, literally. Even like her minions, right? In Borderlands 1 and 2 and 3, all like the like the bandits they will just like constantly be saying funny lines and stuff and like there's always something entertaining coming out of their mouths the lost legion they just say basic soldier stuff nothing really to like entertain you grab your attention be like oh those are funny guys to fight and then some of the enemy designs are god awful like the sugar ass they literally just look like a floating piece of shit what were they thinking and then you got the side characters I really like that we got to see more of Roland and Lilith. They are both very interesting characters. And I just like what they did with them in this game. It was nice to see more of their story, such as what they've been doing throughout the years in between Borderlands 1 and 2. I liked that. And it was cool to see like Roland and Lilith like actually being a couple. The fleshing out of Roland and Lilith's hatred and rivalry with Jack is set up really well in this game. And it makes it all the more like i wouldn't say better but like more fulfilling for like their hatred towards each other and especially jacks because roland and lilith personally ruined him at several key points in this game and it led to him going further down the rabbit hole of insanity and it was really cool that they set that up because that once again adds world building to this universe oh and moxie too uh we got to see Moxie and Jack end up hating each other throughout the course of the story. And that obviously adds more as well. And none of this is really retcons either. It's just further expanding on stuff we know and just showing the course of history happening. And it's just really interesting and unique how, they, how they're doing this. And I really like that about this story. But then you got people like Janie Springs. I don't know. I didn't find her to be a very intriguing and fun character. She was just kind of boring, just in general. I went Pickle. Pickle was all right. You know, just tiny Australian person. That's pretty much it. 
However, Mr. Torg, oh man, Mr. Torg, one of my favorite characters in Borderlands, and he was just perfect. He was absolutely perfect in uh in this. Like, I love doing his side quests and getting to interact with him. That was such a blast. I love him so much. He like every every mission where he appeared was just always infinitely better. Now we have the Vault Hunters you get to play as. I think this group of Vault Hunters is some of the best playable characters that we've had in Borderlands. I actually think they're better than what you get to play as in Borderlands 3. And the characters you get to play as in Borderlands 3, so fun. There's so much uniqueness to who you get to play as. The character I mained for most of the campaign was the Baroness Aurelia Hammerlock. And her personality is absolutely hilarious typical rich bitch that you know just hates on poor people acts like she's better than everybody but like it was nice to kind of see that she was like one of the vault hunters that was like kind of disagreeing with what jack was doing and saying that like he was evil of course they ended up ruining her by borderlands 3 and just ended up making her just you know oh evil let's kill her in two seconds that was yeah that was pretty disappointing i really liked playing as her and she was practically like as close to getting to play as a siren as you could without being a siren because of course they weren't going to put a siren in an in-between story and she absolutely melted through enemies like there's so many times where i would have died if it weren't for her main ability like you let that thing go and you could be down and that thing will kill 10 people by the time you get back up like that ice shard is so overpowered if you play it right i also got to play as jack's body double timothy lawrence and he was so fun to play as i mean like he he pretty much became a boss battle by the end of my first playthrough he was so horrendously overpowered i loved it and it was just oh my god so fun to play as him and like you just get more of jack's voice and it's like it's always good to hear jack even though it's not jack it's jack you know and then you get three of them. It was especially fun when you were playing through missions and you have the actual handsome Jack with you as a side, you know, as a following you throughout the mission. And you're playing as Timothy Lawrence. And then you got your two clones aside you. So you have four handsome Jacks fighting together at once. And it's just, oh man. And then you just, and then if you could, you could have like even more people playing as the, the body double which would just make that so chaotic but that's so fun you know i also played a little bit as wilhelm um he was pretty fun from what i from the little i played i like how he like slowly like tears apart the flesh and just ends up becoming like more and more like a robot and his whole his whole character arc is i want to become a robot and real man real <laughs> i really love that that was just entertaining you know and then you got frag trap he is just so fun and chaotic to play as and like he can be your worst enemy or the best thing that can happen to you depending on what his ability chooses and it just it just adds an extra fun element and i like that i like that it's unpredictable it's just overall fun and i love when like he dies and he just falls apart like a lego piece it's just i don't know i just like that it's just something stupid but i love it the unique dialogue that um he gets sometimes too is really nice because you're playing as the claptrap throughout all the games and and the fact that um like some instances like you get really cool unique dialogue with handsome jack and frag trap i really like that speaking of unique dialogue it is a really nice addition to this game that the characters can actually interact for once, you know? Like, in other Borderlands games, your character's pretty much just silent the entire time with occasional quips and stuff. But the characters interact throughout dialogue with, with Handsome Jack and other NPCs and quest givers, and they all have unique things to say. And it's a really nice touch, honestly. Overall, the replayability of this game is... 10 out of 10 because you can play as every character all six of them and there's so many different um play styles you can do with each of them there's three skill trees per character 
and you could just go on and on and on just different variations and combos and then you also got vault hunter true vault hunter and ultimate vault hunter mode and that's always like something to add flavor to the game it's just borderlands has always had really good replayability in general so this doesn't come as a surprise at all now let's move on to gameplay. You pretty much get what you expect with most Borderlands games. It's generally the same experience as Borderlands 2, except it's a little more fleshed out, but not exactly as good in some areas. And I'll explain that in a second. I like the new weapons and rarities that they have added. And the Oz kits, there, you know. I'd rather have the relics, honestly, but I understand. Oh, you're in space, you need an O2 kit, but... Who really cares, honestly? I actually kind of didn't like the floatiness of the low gravity. It just kind of felt like it took way longer to get places because of that. I'm not sure. It could just be me. The graphics, of course, are exactly the same as Borderlands 2. It's just what you'd expect. Still really good looking. I will say, at times, there's like way too many effects on the screen. Like, like when I'm playing as the Baroness and she uses her ice shard, your whole screen is filled with white stuff. <laughs> Pause. Yeah, it kind of just obstructs your view a lot. And same thing with other elemental effects too. Like, I noticed that with acid at times, there's just like way too much on the screen. And then it also comes down to the sound effects as well. You'll have so many guns that make so many different sounds. Like, there was one that me and my friend kept using throughout the campaign because it was just a good gun. But, like, it would just whistle this annoying ice cream truck sounding song non-stop. It just added nothing to gameplay. It was just a gun that sang. There was one shotgun that wouldn't shut the hell up. And it wasn't funny. It wasn't quirky. It was just annoying. It was just the voice of Pickle shouting obscenities out of the gun every single time you used it. You shoot it, you reload it, you aim it at a person, you swap weapons, it's just non-stop talking. When you're trying to focus on dialogue or just talking to your friend, like that could be a little annoying to deal with. I give the gameplay a solid 8 out of 10. Looking back, I can see why some people may have initially hated the game. At the same time, it's not a bad game. It's an average Borderlands game. Yeah, it's definitely not the worst. Obviously, Tales from the Borderlands 2 is the worst Borderlands game. Just because this isn't as good as 2 doesn't mean it's a bad game. There's a lot to this game, and I think it adds a lot of really good stuff to the franchise. And was it needed? Not entirely, but the stuff that was added, I really liked. And the DLC expanding on Claptrap's story, that was also really good. That's like, argue... That's what most people will say is one of the best DLCs, and I can see why. Taking all the score into account, the game averages out to a 7.8 out of 10. Not too bad, but not the best, but it still is a Borderlands game nonetheless. And I love this game, I loved playing it, and honestly, I'll definitely be replaying it multiple times throughout my life. I've already played through it about 5 times so far. And I'm going to keep playing it just like the rest of the Borderlands franchise for the rest of my life.